Hello everyone out there in Rumble X and YouTube land. Welcome back to Diego Knows. I, of course, am Diego, and today we're going to continue to talk about Mean Girls. That's right, Mean Girls, no matter how many uh, videos it takes, okay? It's going to take a lot of videos. I don't care. I'm going to dissect this movie. Every single scene we're going to discuss here, and I'm going to give you a straight man's point of view, because that's what I do here, okay? I take your chick flicks, okay, all that crap that you believe in, and I break it down to what's a little bit more realistic scenarios, all right? Uh... Some of these movies, man, I just swear to God, man, you guys just, I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. All right. Hey, I love to be entertained just as much as the next person, okay? But, you know, if you want to tell a really good story, you got to have some sort of plausibility in there, okay? Some sort of verisimilitude, okay? Something that makes it kind of believable. Like, you can have, like, a sci-fi movie or horror movie. You can have aliens and monsters and all that kind of time travel. Also, it's like that. That's all fine, okay? But if you don't have uh, characters to center to, to latch onto, to relate to, you've got no story or you got a really bad story. Okay, and uh, I understand what they're trying to do with this movie. Okay, it's a teeny bopper movie. It's made for high schoolers, you know, uh, you know, 2004 <laughs> for girls, particularly for girls. I think the target audience that knows what the target audience is is girls that were like unpopular in high school. You know, the classism in high school. You know, you got the rich girls that got everything, and the poor girls that got shit. You know, I get it. I get all that. Okay, and I applaud. I applaud the attempt here. Okay, and I think I think Tina Fey tapped into something that a lot of girls relate. I mean, boys relate to this too, but you're never gonna see a fucking boy movie about this stuff, all right? Uh, so girls especially relate to this. So I understand what Tina Fey was trying to do. Okay, she's trying to pull you back to high school and seeing how stupid y'all were back then. Okay, with you know, it's all about like the clothes. It's all about like who, who's dating the hot guy, the popular guy, who's got the most money. You know, who's the queen or the spring fling? You know, uh, who's gonna do the winter show, the Christmas show, and all that. Kind of, you know, it's, it's all that kind of crap. All right, I get it, right? <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I just think it could have been executed a little bit better. Okay, if I had written this movie, if I had done this movie, uh, first of all, I would have had some uh, heterosexual men involved somewhere in the making of this movie. Okay, that way it would have been, the guys would have been a little bit more believable. I mean, we only really have two guys. Okay, I mean, well, we got more than that, but they're, they're, they're ancillary, okay? They, they don't really do very much, okay? The two main guys we got here are uh, Aaron, the love interest, okay? And he's this good-looking guy, that's, but he's kind of like a dope, okay? You know, he, but he's the guy that all the girls are creaming over in the movie, all right? Uh, you got Aaron there, and then you've got uh, Damien, who's just this big, tall, fat, freaking gay guy. Okay, those are the two main guys. I mean, we got ancillary characters. Like, we got the, the principal, played by Tim Meadows. He's just a dumb principal. Okay, he's just dumb. <laughs> for, for a faculty staff, he's pretty stupid. All right? Um, he says inappropriate things and stuff, you know? And then you've got, like, I guess... I guess you, you, you could say that that Katie, uh, Lizzie Lohan's character, her dad, uh, has some lines in this movie, but he's just a pushover dad. He's bossed around by his wife, okay? Katie's mom, okay? He, he doesn't understand the concept of boundaries and discipline. Like, he didn't really understand what grounding his daughter meant uh, later on in the movie, you know? <laughs> I mean, like, what kind of fucking parents are these? They just let you get away with anything? You know, like, like I mean, their daughter had, like, a fucking house party at their house, lied to them. Okay, lie to them so that they could win because the, they were going to go out of town uh, to watch some stupid uh, black African a cappella band from Africa. <laughs> Mombazo or something, I forgot. Uh, but anyway, and so she lied to her parents. She said she couldn't go because she had to go to an art show. Well, the truth is, she had a house party. Okay, we're talking sex, drugs, alcohol uh, in her parents' house. Okay, and, and, and does she get punished for this? Well, she gets grounded, but I mean. She can still, like, like do whatever she wants. I mean, it's not like she's really grounded. Okay, you know what would happen to me if I done some, pull some crap like that, all right, at that age? Yeah, you know, I, I still wouldn't be sitting down. Okay, so no, no, I mean, we all know that, okay? That's what I'm talking about, verisimilitude, okay? About believability, about plausibility, okay? This shit just, like, the, Katie has no consequences, really. I mean, the only consequences imposed on her are the ones she imposes on herself. Okay, seriously. I mean, she hates she hates the plastique. She hates Regina in particular because Regina uh, made a move on her own ex boyfriend, who Katie just happened to have the hots for. Okay, and uh, that 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 decided to to give her the um, I, I guess you could say the um, uh, that decided to give her the motivation uh, to seek revenge on all the plastiques. Okay, dethrone Regina and all that. And Regina's a bitch. Don't get me wrong; she's not a good girl. Okay, uh, but Regina's stupid. Okay, she's stupid, and Katie's not stupid. Okay, so it's very easy for a, a, a girl with average intelligence 
to go into a, a, a clique full of stupid girls and take over. It's not difficult. She just manipulates them, okay, and gets them to turn on each other, okay, and then she steps in when, when there's a power vacuum. And it's pretty simple, okay? It's, it's not that difficult, all right? It wasn't difficult for her, okay? She's not an underdog. Katie's not an underdog, okay? She walks into this freaking school on her first day. She doesn't really fit in because she's never been to a public school before. She grew up in Africa being homeschooled. Okay, and on her second day, she, she makes friends with two nerds. Okay, a, a closeted lesbian. Okay, who looks who looks like a closeted lesbian, and, and a big dumb fat gay guy who's just fucking you know who's just you know prima donna. I mean, what the fuck? Okay, and then on her third day, uh, she gets she gets hit on by some loser, and because of that, uh, the plastiques decide to invite her into their social circle. I mean, it's not, it wasn't difficult for her. She didn't have to struggle at all because we saw her eating her lunch in the shitter. I guess that's supposed to be like a struggle. It wasn't a fucking struggle. Okay, you know, like what the fuck? You know, I mean, she made friends really, really quickly. She made the right friends really, really quickly. So this is just dumb. It's just dumb. That, that's the biggest problem I have with it, okay? If you're going to talk about how hard it is to be, uh, to be one of the popular girls at school, all the stuff you have to go through, don't make it easy. Make it difficult. That way we can see that it actually cost Katie something to get up there. Let's let her see get corrupted. I mean, she gets corrupted in the movie. Okay, that's fine. Let's get let's give her her story arc where that happens. Okay, but don't make it so fucking easy. Okay, don't make it so fucking easy. Okay, there there was really no challenge here. Regina's a dumbass. She's stupid. She can't even tell the difference between uh, carbohydrates and fucking fat. She can't even read the fucking labels. She can't even read numbers. Okay, she's a dumb fuck. She is a dumb fuck who likes to, you know, to pick on her own fucking, her own fucking uh, club there, her own little clique. You know, like, how, how do you invite a girl into your club and then make fun of her, insult her, berate her? Like, you, like what the fuck? What kind of a leader does that? How, you, how are you going to maintain control of your clique if you're constantly making fun of your own members? That's not going to work. Okay, but yeah, somehow that, that, that's what happens. Yeah, that's... And the fact that none of these girls are, are capable of realizing that it was Katie all along who was manipulating them. Hmm. You know, the new girl, the girl that just now joined their group, is the one that's been causing all this drama. That, that where there was no drama before. Got getting them to turn on each other. Okay, getting them to, you know, reveal deep dark secrets that they don't have any business knowing. You know, shit like that. I mean, it's so fucking simple. I mean, a blind man can see right through this, okay? But nobody in this fucking movie can see through it. Because uh, they want you to be all, be fucking stupid. Don't pay attention to that stuff. Just pay attention to those clothes, okay? Pay attention to the hot guy, okay? Pay attention to that, okay? Don't pay attention to that. This shit would never fucking happen in real life, okay? Don't pay, because it, it kind of breaks the spell, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, all right? And I'm sorry, but the spell was broken the moment I started watching this movie with my ex-girlfriend. She wanted me to watch it because it was an accurate depiction of high school for her. Get the fuck out of here, okay? I went to high school, too, and it wasn't like this. It wasn't this fucking easy, okay? Nowhere near this easy. Okay, if it was, everybody would have done it, all right? Uh, so that's the biggest problem I have with this movie. And once once you do that, once you remind me that this movie um, fails on so many levels, you can't really get me to fucking buy into it again, all right? And that's why I don't like this movie, okay? It has nothing to do with the topic. Okay, I have no, no nothing against chick flicks or, or making a high school movie. Nothing wrong with that. There's great high school movies out there. Fucking like Breakfast Club is great. Fucking Ferris Bueller is great, okay? Uh, you know, um, American Pie is great. I mean, there's a lot of good high school movies out there. I'm just saying this isn't one of them. Okay, and because I can't buy into the movie at the very beginning, okay, I can't I can't stay invested throughout the rest of the movie, okay? Uh, because why? Because I have a fucking brain. I can't help but unsee something once I've seen it, okay? Uh, none of this shit would happen. You got one guy who's in charge of the entire fucking voting process, okay, for Spring Fling Queen. You out of your fucking mind? Like, is that easy to fucking stuff the ballots for election interference? Is it just one fucking guy that, that's responsible for this? Come on. You got fucking uh, teachers that are having sex with the students inside rooms inside the school where the doors aren't even locked? Are you out of your fucking mind? You know, I mean, come on. This is stupid. All right. I'm going to give you a straight man's point of view.
All right, that's what I do here, okay? And I'm gonna fucking finish this movie, okay? Come hell or high water, okay? Uh, if you're easily offended, get the fuck out, okay? I'm not gonna censor myself for you. I got nothing to gain my life to you, okay? So I'm gonna tell you the honest got truth with you, like it or not. If you don't like it, fine. Live in your fucking fantasy world, okay? Where everything happens the way where Prince Charm is gonna show up, okay? With his fucking square jaw and his fucking six pack abs and his big cock and his fucking huge fucking bank account. It's gonna pop up out of ma ma magic error and just fucking seduce you like that. You and your fucking 200 pound fat ass, alright, who thinks she's fucking pretty because she fucking said Madonna that, that fucking body positive shit, get the fuck out of here with that noise, alright, you gotta live in the fucking real world, when are you gonna live in the fucking real world, alright, now I enjoy science fiction, I enjoy my superhero movies as much as the next guy, okay, but I know that's bullshit, I know that's never gonna fucking happen to me, okay, I know that, alright, <laughs> I don't think, <laughs> Okay, uh, that's the difference, I think, okay, uh, between men and women in their movies. Men, we go in there, we enjoy it, okay, but we go in there knowing this is bullshit, and we leave the theater knowing it's bullshit. Okay, you girls fucking watch this shit, and you think, oh my god, it's gonna happen to me too, just like it happened to her. As I'm diddling your daddle down there. Get the fuck out of here with that noise, all right? It's sad. It's sad, okay? All right, so where we leave off last time, okay? So we had this party uh, at Katie's house. Like I said, she lied to her parents so she could have this house party. Okay, alcohol, drugs, sex, all of this involved. Um, Katie's now the leader of the Plastiques. She uh, she ousted uh, Regina. She manipulated Gretchen and Karen to oust Gina, uh, Regina. So Regina's no longer with them. Okay, she's in an open relationship now with this guy named uh, Sherman. Okay, who, uh, I guess that's his name, Shane. So Shane Odom. Okay, and uh, this was the guy that she was cheating on her boyfriend Aaron with, okay? But now that Aaron dumped her, okay, now she's like with Shane, okay, now like all the time, okay? They're in public, they're having sex at her fucking, at her house, her mom is watching them fuck and, uh, and offering fucking condoms and shit and lube, okay? Yeah, yeah, okay? Um, so Regina's pissed off that Katie had this party without her. That she was not invited because she's no longer popular because she's gained weight because she's too fucking stupid to realize that these protein bars, these Swedish protein bars uh, that Katie uh, tricked her into eating are making her fatter. Like she can't fucking tell even when she goes to get her dress fitted and she doesn't fit into her prom dress. Uh, she still doesn't understand that uh, Katie gave her these fucking protein bars to, to make her get fat. She still can't figure that out. Okay. Uh, she still keeps eating the goddamn uh, Keletine protein bars. Okay, and the reason you would think that she would just look at the wrapper and see, okay, wait a minute, this is loaded with fat and shit, right? But no, because uh, the ingredients are all in Swedish, okay? The numbers are not in Swedish, but the ingredients are written in Swedish, okay? So she can't understand that. Okay, that's the excuse why she doesn't realize there's a shitload of calories in these bars, okay? And also, she's not eating anything else, okay? So she's always stuffing her face uh, with shit. Like, we saw her stuffing her face with donuts and muffins and all sorts of shit. I guess she didn't realize that when you stuff your face with junk, you get fatter. Okay, I guess she is too fucking stupid. The, the leader of the most popular girls in school is too stupid to realize that. Okay? So she got fatter. I don't think she looks that bad. I mean, come on. She got junk in the trunk now, which is better than what Rachel McAdams had before. I mean, so, I mean, I saw her ass in the notebook. Remember that scene where she jumped into the water? Where she swung in the water? Okay, yeah. I, mean, I, I got a good look at her body. Okay, she's all right. Okay, but when she's got more fucking, you know, uh, more cushion for pushing back there, then she, she looks a little bit better, I think. I thought she looks sexier with her fatter ass. Honestly, as long as the waist is small, you can, you can, get, you can go pretty high on, on that ass. Right? You can go pretty thick on that ass, as long as the waist is small. Okay, you're going to fucking get some, all right? We all know that. Okay, anyway, so, uh, yeah, so she's upset. She crashes the party. Obviously, Katie didn't invite her, and she catches fucking um, Katie... And Aaron there, but Katie throws up on Aaron after she admitted that she lied to him about being stupid at math. She said, no, Aaron, you're actually stupid at math, okay? I was just pretending to be stupid at math so that you could tutor me after school. That way I could have an excuse to see you after school, yeah, you know? Okay, well, Aaron takes com fucking complete offense to the fact that he was manipulated and used that way. Okay, so he decides to leave leave her there after she threw up on him. He goes get, gets fucked in the ass by a couple of gay guys in the bathroom, and then he starts walking away. Now, Katie starts chasing him out the door. Don't call me. 
you call me? And he's all pissed off trying to wipe the puke and, and the human semen off of his fucking shirt. So while Katie's out there, okay, all of a sudden this car pulls up, okay, and it's Damien, the fat fucking gay guy Damien, okay, uh, he's driving, and then there's Janice, okay, the goth chick fucking uh, Faruka Bulk wannabe uh, from the craft, okay, who absolutely hates Regina and the plastic. She's the one that recruited Katie to fucking infiltrate the plastics for her, okay, because she can't fucking get any dick because she's too fucking ugly and disgusting. All right, well, she hates the whole world. No, no shit. Okay, it's easy to hit the world when nobody fucking likes you. Okay, anyway, and she sees Katie there in her tight pink and black dress, okay, having a house party at her house. And then all of a sudden, Janice realizes now that Katie lied to her. Katie promised that she would go to see her art show. Okay, uh, but she made it. She made uh, an excuse. She said, "I'm no. I'm gonna be out of town with my parents. We're gonna watch some fucking African uh, from Africa uh, a cappella band in Wisconsin. So we're not gonna be here. So I can't make your art show. When the truth is, okay, is that she blew off Janice so that she could have her house party. Okay, and she specifically did that so that Janice and and Damien would not uh, arrive to their this house party. So now Janice figured that out. So now she's pissed off. Okay, she's gonna give fucking uh, Katie a piece of her mind." Okay, <clears throat> so Katie tries to explain uh, to Janice uh, that she couldn't invite them because she was still pretending to be a plastic. <clears throat> okay, I, I, I can't invite you because then they'll know that, that I'm pretending to be their friend. Okay, and Janice is just like, ah, oh, she's all drama queen now, man. Oh my god, she's like, you're not pretending anymore. <laughs> You're just soaking up all the awesomeness. So even though Janice is always talking about how she fucking hates the plastiques and everything they stand for, or the superficiality of having popular kids at school and all that kind of crap, despite the fact that she says all that all the fucking time, the truth is she's jealous as fuck that she's not popular herself. She's jealous as fuck that she doesn't get to sit at that table anymore. Okay, because apparently she used to, like in grade school or middle school, okay, she was friends with Regina. She had a falling out with her, okay, and uh, Regina started calling her a lesbian, and so she lost her social status, okay, and ever since that happened, instead of her regaining her social status, which she could have easily done, because like I said, the plastics are all fucking stupid, no, she waited for a new girl, a hot new girl to show up uh, to, so that she could be friends, so that she could recruit her to infiltrate the plastics on her behalf. Okay, that's what happened here, all right? <clears throat> you know, so that's going on here, okay? And uh, Katie says, like, you made me this way! <laughs> so you could use me for your eighth grade revenge! <laughs> yep, and that's true, that's true. The reason Janice wanted Katie to infiltrate the Plastiques uh, is because Regina had, had rejected her back in the eighth grade. Okay, she got kicked out of the Plastiques herself. So she had to become this ugly, fucking unattractive uh, goth girl, okay? You know, uh, the white skin, the big fucking uh, mascara, you know, all that kind of fucking eyeliner, you know, the, the gothic clothes and all that kind of shit, spiky hair, all that kind of bullshit, all right? Uh, all that happened uh, because uh, Regina rejected her, okay? So this was her revenge strategy, was to recruit uh, Katie to go in there, okay? Uh, so even Janice has a lot of unresolved shit, Okay, she got her own fucking skeletons going on in her closet, okay? She has no business, that's like the pot calling the kettle black here. She has no business judging fucking uh, Katie when she should be judging herself. She's no better than Katie here. But, you know, because she's in the car, you know, on the sunroof, she's sticking out of the sunroof, she feels that she has the high ground here. She has the moral high ground, okay? So she decides to give Katie a piece of her mind, all right? <clears throat> she says, like, at least Regina and I know that we're mean. <laughs> You try to act out innocent. <laughs> okay. So basically, uh, the problem uh, that Janice has with Katie is that Janice knows that she's an asshole. Okay, at least she she doesn't pretend not to be one. But Katie's worse because Katie pretends to be nice, but she's really an asshole. Okay, so that that that's the moral that's the moral dilemma here between these two. All right. <laughs> You see? You see the drama here? Okay, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Katie's like, It's not my fault that you're like in love with me or something. Okay, yes. Because Regina told Katie that, <laughs> that Janice is a lesbian, all right? 
<laughs> well, that's probably true. <laughs> okay, but she doesn't. She doesn't. Janice doesn't act very feminine. Like, yeah, I know she works at a fucking soap store at the mall. Okay, I get that. And she's an artsy fartsy bitch. I get all that. Okay, but she doesn't really. Um, she doesn't really project uh, heterosexuality. Okay, like guys are not gonna find her attractive. Okay. Uh, they're just not, okay, because of the way she presents herself. I'm sure she's got a nice body underneath it, maybe underneath all those clothes and those black fucking t-shirts and the leather jackets and all that kind of shit. Underneath all that shit, the chains and all that kind of stuff, I'm sure she fucking looks good, but you'd never know it based on what she looks like now, okay? So the re what that tells me is that she's not trying to attract a guy, okay, which means that she's not trying to attract a guy, okay? So either she has uh, no libido at all, she's frigid, or she's just not attracted to guys. Hence, she would have no reason to make herself look pretty for a guy. You see what I mean? So yeah, it makes a lot of sense that she would be a lesbian, okay? Doesn't mean you should make fun of her for it. Okay, come on, it's 2004, man. If this was like the 1950s, I could see all the girls at school making fun of her and calling her Lizzie the Lezo, Lesbo, okay? But come on, this is 2004, okay? If you're not a lesbian in school, you're not cool. Okay, let's get, let's get fucking real here, okay? <laughs> I know the suburb where this takes place. It takes place in Evanston. It's a suburb of Chicago. Very fucking liberal. Very Jewish suburb. Very fucking liberal over there, okay? They're all about fucking, you know, like like you're not you're not popular unless you're unless you've got a dick up your ass, okay? Okay, you're not popular unless you fucking got carpet in your lunchbox, all right? If you're a girl. All right, so that's just the way it is, all right? And it was that way in 2004, too, okay? So don't give me this shit that everybody made fun of her uh, for being a lesbian or something, or people, she thought she was a lesbian. They don't fucking do that shit anymore. All that shit's fucking made up, okay? You know, yes, that stuff happened, but it's been a long time since that shit like that was mainstream, okay? Every fucking public school in America, every private school in America has rules about bullying someone based on their fucking sexuality, okay? You can't even get away with it in a fucking TV show or a fucking movie, okay? Much less at school, Okay, without the whole fucking world jumping down your fucking throat. My God, you can't even fucking gay bash anyone in the goddamn military now. Okay, you can't even, the guy that got the generals fucking got pink hair for Christ's sake. Okay, he's wearing a fucking bra and, and he's got a cock. So what the fuck, and that's the general, okay? So don't give me this shit that fucking, you're being persecuted. Ah, get the fuck out of here with that noise. I'm not saying it never happened, but it's not happening anywhere near the way it used to be. And that's including 2004. Right? In 2004, we were at that fucking show, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, right? You remember that fucking piece of shit? I only watched one episode, and we're going to watch another episode again, okay? The whole, the whole excuse with that shit was that you had a fucking bunch of fucking gay guys who were going to give a straight guy a makeover so they could have a, an excuse to get close to the straight guy and touch his ass and feel him up and shit. That's the only reason they fucking did it. <sighs> get the fuck fuck out of here with that noise because in case you haven't noticed Hollywood has always been pro-gay at least it has not since the 1960s okay it's been pro-gay and anti-straight okay so don't give me that shit that the fucking she was being persecuted all the girls are making fun of her for being gay and that shit don't happen anymore it don't alright I mean some of that stuff happened when I was in high school but I was in high school a long fucking time ago alright anyway moving right along okay uh, so Katie says, like, it's not my fault that you're in love with me or something. You could tell looking at Janice's face that that struck a nerve, okay? Uh, that struck, that, that hit her close to home, okay? Now Damien stops the car. Okay, now Damien's been driving the car slowly this whole time. He doesn't want to pull over because he has a curfew. He tells that to Janice, I can't pull over, I have a curfew. But once uh, Katie said that, then Damien stops the car and goes like, oh, hell no, you did not just go there. Yeah, like the gay guy that he is, all right? And Janice says, like, All you plastics think everyone is in love with you. <laughs> when everyone really hates you. Aaron broke up with Regina. And he still doesn't want you. Well, how the fuck would you know that? Okay, you just got there. You didn't see the whole Aaron puking on her and walking away from her shit, okay? You didn't see all that, all right? Well, I mean, maybe she did see that part, but she didn't understand the context. All she saw was Katie screaming at Aaron, don't go, okay? But she doesn't know how that happened or, or what, what the circumstances were behind that, all right? <clears throat> So yeah, so uh, she says that, you know, uh, Aaron broke up with Regina and he still doesn't want you. So why are you still messing with Regina? 
because you're a mean girl. You're a bitch. <laughs> okay. Now she does have a point here, okay? The whole reason that Katie hated Regina, okay, was because Regina made moves on the guy that she liked, okay, Aaron, okay, because Aaron is Regina's ex-boyfriend, okay, so Regina didn't give two shits about Aaron at all, but when Regina found out that Katie, okay, had the hots for her ex-boyfriend, she decided to get him back to purposely clock a cock block uh, Katie, okay, well, uh, Katie took personal offense to that, and that's when she decided that she was going to get revenge on Regina for stealing her man. Okay, when technically, uh, because Aaron's too much of a dumb fuck, he actually took Regina back, then technically he is Regina's man. And she's actually trying to steal her man, but she doesn't realize this, okay? Despite the fact that Regina is cheating on Aaron, okay, which is with Shane, okay, Aaron is too fucking stupid to realize this. So he took back Regina knowing that she's a bitch, okay? That tells me that Aaron is a dumb fuck too. Just like Regina and everyone else in this fucking movie, okay? Like I said, it's hard to root for fucking Katie when she's the only one that has two brain cells in this whole fucking movie. Okay? So that's going on here, okay? And um, so, yeah, so Katie's a bitch and Katie's a mean girl. Okay? And Janice uh, throws her art show painting. I guess she won an award at the art show that she went to earlier that night, the one that Katie was supposed to go to, and she throws the painting at Katie, okay? Okay? And then Damien drives away, okay? And he says, I want my pink shirt back! Whatever the fuck that means, all right? Well, Janice's painting was a, was a painting of the three of them, okay? It was Janice, Damien, and Katie. That's what was on, in the painting, okay? And Katie, of course, looks at the painting of when they all used to be friends. <laughs> Even though she's drunk, you know, she just threw up and stuff. Now, she, now she's getting all emotional, okay? Well, later on, well, not later on, but on the, but on the other side of this, okay, at the same time, uh, Regina storms out of the party, okay? Like I said, she saw uh, Katie throw up on, on Aaron and they walked away. Regina leaves the party and she drives out to her Lexus. That's her convertible. It's a Lexus, all right? And she's there with Shane, her boyfriend, okay? He's wearing his Letterman jacket. And while she's doing this, while she's storming out of there and going towards her car, she's stuffing her face with those goddamn Kelatine high-calorie protein bars, all right? And she's talking while her mouth is going like that, all right? Just like fucking Miranda did in every fucking episode of Sex and the City. <clears throat> all right. So she starts screaming, okay, and shit about, and, and Shane, Shane tells her that his football, he's like, oh, I don't like those, I don't like those bars that you're eating there, man. That's the stuff that our, our coach gives us when he wants us to put on weight. And when he says that, she's like, Bleh, bleh. She's like, ah! like she just now fucking realized that those bars were making her fat. Okay. Now she said something about it earlier in the movie when she was trying on her dress and it didn't fit. She told Kate, Kate, those protein bars you told me to eat, they suck. And then Kate said like, oh, oh no, no, no. First of all, that's just water weight. Uh, for, you gain 10 pounds first and then all of a sudden, boom, you'll lose it just like that. Mm -hmm. And then Regina's like, okay, like that. Like she just trusted her, but yeah, she still kept getting fatter. You would think that any normal person would realize, oh my God, these protein bars are making me fat. I gotta stop eating them, okay? So either Katie's a dumbass and she doesn't know uh, that these protein bars make me make people fat or she did it on fucking purpose. Cause I'm a dumbass, you see what I mean? So no, her boyfriend is the one that tells her that yeah, our, our coach gives us those bars when he wants us to put on weight. So now Regina realizes that, uh, that she's been manipulated by Katie this whole time to get fatter. Okay, because that was the point. The point was to attack the plastics on three levels. Number one, to get rid of Regina's body, check. Number two, to get rid of uh, Regina's high value man, Aaron, check. And the third one is to get rid of Regina's uh, uh, cohorts, okay, her lackeys, check. Okay, so they succeeded in all three. That's how they got rid of fucking uh, Regina. <clears throat> all right. Okay, so that's going on here, okay. And uh, Regina's all pissed off. She spits it out, starts screaming. And, and she's screaming so much. Ah! That Shane just, like, doesn't even get in the car. He just, like, decides to run away because he's a fucking pussy. <laughs> All right. Next scene, uh, she's still screaming. Guess what? She's still screaming when she gets home. Okay. Uh, and, and, um, it's not a school. Okay. And she goes to her burn book. Okay. Now, the burn book is this pink book that they have at her house 
whenever they don't like somebody, okay, what they do is they take a picture of that person, they paste it onto a blank page, and they write shit about that person, okay? Whatever slanders or rumors or gossip, okay, uh, they write it on there. Okay. Uh, earlier, Katie was pissed off at her at her teacher, math teacher, Miss Norsberry, played by Tina Fey, who wrote this movie, by the way. Okay. Uh, and she told Miss Norsberry told her, "Hey, listen, I know you're fucking uh, you're you're purposely failing math class because you're trying to impress a boy, but I'm telling you, you don't need to do that. Okay. And I'm telling you, it's not worth it. Okay. You're a good math math student. Okay. And I'm gonna push you to do better. Okay. Because that's what I am. I'm a pusher." Okay, well, Katie interpreted that to mean that uh, uh, Mrs. Norsberry is actually a drug pusher. Okay, she's probably definitely selling drugs, pushing drugs to pay for that divorce she's always complaining about. Okay, you see what I mean? So she decided to put that in the burn book. She put a picture of Mrs. Norsberry there and wrote down that Mrs. Norsberry is a drug pusher. Okay, shit like that. They write shit in there. There's, there's a page in there about Janice about her being a lesbian and stuff. Okay, so this is what this is what they do. The, the, the plastics write down shit into a book. Now, here's the weird thing about it. This this burn book is is the uh, is the MacGuffin of the movie here. Okay, a lot of the plot revolves around this burn book and the people who are in it and the consequences of that. Okay, but I'm telling you right now. Okay, there's nothing wrong with having a burn book. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, if you're gonna outlaw a burn book, if you're gonna get the cops involved because uh, some student has a burn book at home, you, you, you're gonna have to outlaw fucking uh, diaries too. Okay, because there's no difference. Okay, everyone writes. Sh everyone who has a diary, okay, they're gonna write shit in there. Okay, as long as it's just for you, you don't publish it, then there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so I don't understand how it was such a dangerous book to have later on in the movie, how the fucking the principal and the teachers all over, the cops even, all overreact to the shit that was in this burn book. Okay, when it's just written by a bunch of fucking teenage girls. They're just writing out their fucking shit, their grievances and shit into a book. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, but this movie's gonna make it look like, oh my God, can you believe someone said that? You know, and everyone gets involved. This is stupid, okay? <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with fucking writing a goddamn diary and writing bad shit about people. As long as you don't publish it somewhere or, or, or post a video about it or stuff like that, then there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, there's no law against it is what I'm trying to say, all right? <clears throat> anyway, so... um Anyway, so Kate, um, not Katie, uh, uh, Regina grabs the burn book and she starts writing down this, this girl is the nastiest skank bitch I've ever met. Do not trust her. She's a fugly slut. Okay. She writes that down in the burn book. Okay. Now we think that she's going to post a picture of Katie in this, but she's not. Okay, and I gotta raise a bullshit flag here, okay? Because, okay, uh, this is actually Regina's fault, okay? Okay, she provided, Regina provided Katie with all the ammunition that Katie would need to fuck her and her friends over, okay? Completely, okay? She provided Katie with all the trust that Katie needed to exploit her, okay? There was, okay, Regina doesn't understand the concept of self-preservation. She doesn't understand that, hey, listen, this girl's a stranger, Okay, I don't know anything about her, so why the fuck am I inviting her into our club? Why the fuck am I sharing my deepest, darkest secrets with her? Okay, why the fuck am I trying to fuck her over and make fun of her and get her mad at me? But at the same time, I'm telling her shit that, that, that she can use against me later on to blackmail me with? You see what I mean? It makes no fucking sense. And Regina's too stupid because the person that wrote this movie is too fucking stupid to realize that. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Tina Fey. That's what I'm talking about. They keep trying to make you fucking look over here instead of looking right in front of you. Okay? This one, that's why this shit would never happen in real life. Okay? You don't fuck over, you know, like, like I was in the Marines, okay? So that means, like, when I was out there in combat, the guy that left me, the guy that right me, they had to have my back. Okay? They had to protect me so I could protect them. Okay? Now, if I depended on these two guys to watch my 6 o'clock for me, because I can't, do you really think I'm going to tell them shit like, hey, by the way, I fucked your wife and you, uh, your mom's ugly? Do you think I'm going to say shit like that to these guys that, that I'm, I'm, I'm depending on them to make sure nothing happens to me? Of course not. Because what do you think they're going to fucking do? Exactly. So why the fuck is Regina so stupid not to fucking realize this? And then she's going to blame Katie? No, you got to blame yourself. Okay? She provided Katie with, with her Achilles heel. Okay, while ridiculing her the whole time. No, 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 no. This is Regina's fault all the way. Okay, now the twist is that Regina does not put a picture of Katie on that page. Instead, she puts a picture of herself. Yes. 
Uh, she puts it in there and she turns the book over to the principal. Ooh, okay. She turns the so she's gonna burn. So now she's using her brain. Now she's coming up with a plot, a Machiavellian scheme to get revenge on the plastics that try to fuck her over, particularly Katie. Okay. So uh, you know, Regina Regina tells the principal. There's only three girls in the school who aren't in it. Because the principal wants to know, well, who wrote this? It's not signed. Who wrote this burn book? Who created this burn book? Who wrote all this stuff in there? And Regina says, well, there's only three girls that aren't in it. Because she put herself in it to draw away suspicion, you see? Okay, so that's going to be your plan to, to get back at Katie and the others, all right? Okay, I'm going to stop my review right here, but I'll be back shortly to continue my review of Mean Girls. I thank you very much for watching this long, and I will see you soon on the next one. Bye.